In this episode, we cover Australia and New Zealand, two neighboring countries with polar opposite approaches to tobacco harm reduction. We also summarize the situation in the United States around shipping and importing of vape equipment and liquids via the Postal Service and private carriers. Hello, and welcome back to The Advocate's Voice. In this bulletin, we are covering issues in Asia Pacific and also from within the United States. But first, Australia. Once a leader in tobacco control, they are now lagging behind New Zealand. This is with the introduction of the full medicalization of nicotine e-liquid and nicotine e-cigarettes that will be in place from October 2021. Australia was once the world leader in tobacco control and harm reduction. 24 years later, Australia is no longer a world leader in tobacco control and the smoking rates there have remained mainly stagnant. Many former smokers have found electronic cigarettes to be a lifesaver in their quest to be smoke-free. The Australian Health Minister, Greg Hunt, has pushed through regulations with the TGA to medicalize nicotine e-liquid and vaping, saying that this is not something that on my watch I am willing to countenance, referencing consumer availability of nicotine. The regulation, which comes into effect in October 2021, requires a script for nicotine. However, they do not compel general practitioners to write these for their patients. Importation of nicotine and e-cigarettes is still going to be allowed with a prescription. Consumers, advocates, and medical professionals are continuing to fight in hopes of overturning this decision. Why is the Minister of Health being so stubborn and dogmatic? We speak with Terry Barnes, a former policy advisor to the Australian government, about the politics of public health in Australia. Welcome, Terry, and thank you for joining us today. In your opinion, why do you think the Minister of Health is being so stubborn about accepting nicotine as a consumer product? Well, I think it's partly because the tobacco control lobby in Australia is so powerful and has some uh, very influential and very uh, uh, politically uh, persuasive figures in it. But I think the other side of it is that they're actually very able to distort the truth, distort reality, particularly in relation to nicotine, by talking about nicotine as if it is everything in tobacco uh, and tobacco smoke. They've, they've managed to persuade uh, policymakers, they've managed to persuade the media that uh, anything that they don't endorse, and that particularly includes vaping and vaping uh, and electronic nicotine delivery systems and, and even things like SNUS, they, they, they basically uh, have persuaded politicians to, to kick out, to, to effectively in Australia ban. Do you believe that the New Zealand regulations may influence Australia down the line towards being more consumer friendly? Well, I'd like to think it would because I think it's a, actually a common sense decision by, well, two New Zealand governments and certainly the admission by both Labor and the, the Nationals that uh, the only way that New Zealand can meet its smoke-free 2025 target is to, to do this. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. But over on this side of the ditch, I think uh, New Zealand is always held out as some sort of outlier. It's, it's held out as uh, doing the wrong thing, as caving into the tobacco lobby and uh, um, doing, uh, doing harm to people. I just can't believe that's the truth. I don't believe it's the truth. But uh, again, those very influential people in the public health sector who don't like any version of the world that's different to theirs get in the way of uh, not only good policy, but safer policy. We had the opportunity to speak with Professor Robert Beaglehole of the University of Auckland, who is also the Director of Action on Smoking and Health in New Zealand, about the New Zealand approach to vaping and tobacco harm reduction. My name is Robert Beaglehole. I trained in medicine, epidemiology and public health. For 20 years I was an academic at the University of Auckland, but then my most important job was as Director of Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion at WHO in Geneva. And whilst there we paid a lot of attention to tobacco control, and of course those were the years in which the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control got started. 
But my overriding career passion has been tobacco control. I've been involved for 40 years, probably influenced by the death of my father very early from heart disease. And I distinctly remember in that same year, my first patient as a medical student was dying of lung cancer. And it's a very, very vivid image for me too. And I'm sure my interest in this preventable cause of death and disease stemmed from those early experiences. The New Zealand legislation passed earlier this year is very important in that it recognises vaping as a, a good tool for people who want to who smoke and who want to stop. It recognises the harm reduction potential of vaping. And so that's a very good start. The legislation had to balance the concerns about adult smokers who want to stop smoking cigarettes versus the risks to children. And I don't think we got the balance quite right. But it's progressive. It could be better. And the decision is a, a good start and the legislation can be improved, the regulations still have to be formulated, and there are options for uh, overcoming some of the limitations of the legislation. Now to the United States. Many vapors in Asia Pacific ship in their supplies from America. This is about to change. <laughs> The United States Postal Service and some shipping companies, such as FedEx, have announced that they will, from the 1st of March 2021, prohibit the shipment of any e-cigarette equipment, liquid and supplies, both domestically and internationally. This will have far-reaching effects outside their borders. This is being done to comply with legislation that was introduced to Congress in July and signed into law in December known as the Preventing Online Sale of E-Cigarettes to Children's Act. In addition to banning vaping products shipped by the Postal Service, the bill requires other delivery services to check ID and get an adult signature at the point of delivery. Delivery by private shipping carriers is much more expensive than the Postal Service, and the signature delivery requirement will add additional cost to shipments that some carriers and vapors are not going to be able to meet. This will obviously create great difficulty of access and choice, not just for U.S. vapors, but also those internationally who depend on vendors from the United States for their needs. Now, we go to a summary of issues in the wider Asia-Pacific region. In the Philippines, Fernando Fernandez, president of the Philippine College of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons, advises smokers to switch to vaping products or heated tobacco products as harm reduction measures as they minimize the risk of oral cancer. He says that we warn our patients who are smokers that smoking is a major cause of oral cancer and strongly advise them to quit smoking. For those who can't or don't want to quit smoking, we convince them to switch to other nicotine product alternatives. According to Dodafo, the Danish consumer advocacy group, Denmark is following through on its promise to prohibit flavored vaping products. The Danish parliament approved new restrictions that go into effect on 1 April 2021. The new rules prohibit the manufacture of e-liquids in flavors other than tobacco and menthol after 1 April 2021, but other flavors may be sold until 1 April 2022. It is up to all of us to protect the rights of adults to make informed choices. It is up to us to get engaged in the discussion, not just amongst ourselves, but also with our local public officials who are mandated to represent the greater good of the citizenry and not the special interests of corporates, financiers, and do-gooders with vested interests that run counter to public health. Our health is not for sale. I started to smoke when I was 17. I smoked for nine years. I smoked for 45 years. I switched using apple cinnamon, chocolate, menthol flavor. I'm a friend. I am a sister. I'm a grandfather, a father, and a brother. And I'm an adult. And I have the right to make an informed decision about my health. I'm an adult. And I have made the choice to be smoke-free. 
My health is not for sale. I am proud to be smoke free. Fact. Vaping saved my life. 2021 looks to be bringing all of us more challenges and from many different fronts. It's time to take off the gloves and let the politicians know that once again, they work for us and not the other way around. Nothing about us without us. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and be well.